Hello everyone, I'm Autobot Sonic the Telltale Gamer, bringing you something Telltale Games, Transformers, and more. For today's review, we're going to be looking at Transformers Cyberverse Season 1, Episode 13, Matrix of Leadership. Now, usually 13 is one of the unluckiest numbers in the world, but in Cyberverse's case, it's actually a pretty lucky number, as after the two terrible episodes we've had in a row with Episode 11, Sabotage, and Episode 12, Teletran X, the Matrix of Leadership is a much-needed, like, reprieve from the constantly bad episodes, and while we're not quite back up to the really good episodes that, like, Megatron is my hero or Whiteout, this episode is significantly better than the other episodes, Not, but not without its own fault, so we're gonna go over everything this episode did right and what it did wrong. So this episode starts off immediately after the events of the last episode, Teletran X. So Bumblebee and Teletran X have been driving away from the, the silo where he and Windblade fought Slipstream and her Seekers for a couple hours, and after having to listen to Teletran X mumble on like like a really annoying for a long time, Bumblebee just straight up leaves him and takes refuge in an old abandoned gas station. So it's at this point that Bumblebee just decides to ask Teletran X now they're away from the Decepticons if he knows where the Ark is, which Teletran X explains that he does not, but once Bumblebee realizes that all hope's lost essentially to him, when he, Teletran X notices that Bumblebee has a cortical psychic patch, which Teletran X can hook himself up to so Bumblebee can read it, so Bumblebee can dive into his memories. So, it's at this point that when Teletran X and Bumblebee are going through their memories, Bumblebee wishes he had um, Optimus on Earth with him so that he could tell him what to do. So. Teletron X explains that he is on Earth and that he that he's got a bunch of memories of Optimus that he needs to go through. So they just jump into the first memory, which takes seems to take place sometime after Megatron starts the war for Cybertron, but like before a couple of the other flashbacks, as Bumblebee and Optimus have their Autobot insignias in this, but Bumblebee still has his voice, and it seems as though the war has already started as the um the, as de depicted by the um the plot of this flashback. So anyway, this flashback starts off with Bumblebee and Optimus heading to the um, Cybertronian the, or the site of the Cybertronian Grand C Council, who Megatron had all who had all killed. But according to Optimus, um, he says that Teletran, I'm um, not Teletran, I'm um, Alpha Trion is still alive and sort of don't know. In the G1 continuity, he was known as like the creator of Optimus, and then like his his role varies between um, different continuities. In G in the G1 continuity, he created Optimus in the and the prime aligned continuity, he was Optimus's mentor back when he was Orion Pax. So in this one, Alphatron's just a member of the Senate, so or not the Senate, the Council. So anyway, Optimus and Bumblebee head to the what remains of the Council, in which they find Ratchet keeping um, Alpha Trion on life support, but he's going to die any second now. So when Alpha Trion sees Optimus, um, he tells um. Optimus that he's ready to um, take on the role of the next Prime, which is really interesting considering this is the first time in, well, I, I guess, no, not not the first time because there there's animated, but this is one of the only other times aside from Transformers Animated where Optimus was not a Prime, was not Orion Pax before becoming a Prime. So at this point, um, Tri Alpha Trion gives um, Optimus the Matrix of Leadership, which Optimus accepts, and then as soon as he takes it, and he dies. Um, Alpha Trion dies, not Optimus. No, well, maybe Optimus may die at some point. We don't know yet. So if if um, any uh, like all the other times Optimus has died throughout the Transformers series is anything to go by. So once that memory is over, um, Bumblebee realizes that Optimus wasn't always the Prime that he was in, in all his other flashbacks. But then he wonders how he can be a leader if even Optimus wasn't really meant to be a leader when he took the Matrix of leadership. So Teletron X has Bumblebee look through two more memories of, of Optimus. So this flashback starts with Bumblebee and Wheeljack r running away from a bunch of Decepticons and end up taking cover behind as they're caught in like a middle of a crossfire between two groups of Decepticons. Um, Bumblebee notices that um, Prowl, they, they accidentally left, that Prowl got injured and they left him behind. So Bumblebee tries to go out to try and get Prowl back, but Wheeljack pulls him back down saying that they'll be they'll be killed instantly if they had tried to go out and get Prowl. It's at this point that Bumblebee notices Optimus running right through all the um, Autobot, um, Decepticons with Prowl uh, over his shoulder as he managed to take out a couple of Decepticons before reuniting with um, Wheeljack and Bumblebee. So after that, they get um, Prowl to Ratchet, at which point Optimus tells Bumblebee and Prowl that they, they never leave another bot behind, which of course Bumblebee feels really bad about because that's essentially what he did with Windblade in the last episode, but Teletran X says that he had no choice because that's what Windblade told 
him to do, but Bumblebee still isn't convinced and decides to look at one more memory of Optimus. This final memory seems to take place after the events of Episode 3 AllSpark, in which ended in Optimus throwing the AllSpark through a space bridge off of Cybertron to eventually land on Earth. It's at this point that this is apparent because of the fact that Optimus mentions this later on in the flashback, and that Bumblebee has lost his voice, which we saw in the last flashback of Megatron's My Hero. So in this flashback, Meg, um, Optimus and Bumblebee are being chased by Starscream, Thundercracker, and Nova Storm throughout the re um, destroyed remains of Cybertron. So while they're f they're fighting, they end up crashing down into um the what remains of the Cybertronian Senate, which actually looks very very similar to the way the Senate looked in building looked in the IW comic, specifically how it appeared in the all Hell, um the Megatron Origin comic series and the um. The um, autocracy miniseries. If I'm um, I'm drawing a like blank as like to what it actually looked like in the comics, but from my memory, it looks very similar. Like it re I, it re I remember it being very similar to how it shows it appears in Cyberverse. So anyway, as um, Bumblebee and Optimus uh, are captured by um, Starscream when, um, at Nova Storm and Thundercracker, they're about to kill them all. But Optimus and Bumblebee manage to fight them all off. We actually see some pretty cool, it's actually a really cool like fight between um, Optimus and Starscream specifically. This is how we see two new abilities Starscream has and that he can use um his he, he's got his feet have built-in thrusters that he can use to hover and do like jet kicks which very reminds me a lot of um Ida from My Hero Academia if any of you have watched that anime. But also along with that Starscream has what I think is one of the most hilarious abilities ever is that he can actually true to his name do a sonic scream as he does in one point which he literally screams like a sonic wave at Optimus which stuns him for a moment. I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, why doesn't like, of course like the Starscream would have a screaming attack. Why wouldn't he? Like, feel free to let me know in the comments if there's any other version of Starscream that has used screaming, like a sonic scream to his ability. Like, I've, I've no prime star, I've only know prime star scream, IDW star scream, and I don't know if animated star scream has done that because I've only seen like the first couple episodes of animated. So feel free to let me know if there's any other star scream that does the um the sonic scream because if not, that is a really cool concept for star scream to have, and I'm surprised no other version of star scream has done this before. But anyway, th despite their best um, star scream and secrets best efforts, Optimus and Bumblebee managed to beat them, and Optimus um. Optimus manages to r scare them away. So, at, with with the Seekers gone, Optimus shows Bumblebee around where they are, recognizing it as the Grand Senate when he notices a statue of Prima um, that's all been destroyed, which is Prima essentially like, kind of like the god, one of the many gods, or, pro or like early 13 Primes of um, the Transformers universe. So, it's at this point that Optimus laments to Bumblebee how he realizes that Cybertron is dying because he um, he messed up in th throwing the AllSpark um, to um, through the space bridge off of Cybertron, and they realize that they have to get it back as soon as possible, so that's why he's having the arc built, and that's pretty much where the flashback ends, and that's, with that, Bumblebee realizes that even though Optimus made, a, like, did a lot of good things, sometimes he messed up, but he knew that he, when he messed up, he had to fix what he did wrong, so knowing, knowing that, um, Bumblebee and Teletron X decide to head back on the road and try to go get Windblade, which we'll see in the next episode as the the tagline for it, it the, the plot synopsis for it, it basically was about Bumblebee and Teletron X heading to go fight, save Windblade. So we'll go, can't wait to see what, what happens in that next week, the next episode. Now we're going to get on to the cons this episode. Really, the only cons I can, um, the, one of the biggest cons this episode is probably just the character of Teletron X. Now, I don't want to put like this on the episode just to the way that Teletron X is. Teletron X is a very, very annoying character and... He, he reminds me a lot of the paperclip that used to be on, like, Windows, like, a bunch of years ago. The one that's always like, oh, it seems like you're trying to open, like, write a Word document. Would you like my help? And it just, it reminds me a lot of that. Like, a really, really annoying paperclip. And, uh, just, like, I mean, I, I get, like, Teletron X gets better the half, like, about halfway through the episode. But, like, the, the entire beginning up until when Bumblebee jumps into, like, the, the second memory, I'd say. But Teletron X is just, I want to punch him every time I hear him speak. It, it's just... He's so annoying. Anyway, like, though, I, I don't want to, like, say, like, oh, this episode's only bad because of Teletron X. No, um, only other, pr um, problems I have with it is, um, I gotta say that, like, that's some of the, um, it, this is, this to me is essentially one of those, like, obligatory, oh, um, character needs to learn a life lesson episodes. This, the same thing kind of happened back in, um, episode 9, Shadow Striker, in which Bumblebee realized that, like, there's more to 
fighting than just being the strongest one. Sometimes you have to know, like, when, like, not to fight. And I understand that. But that that, that episode got a pass for the most part because we got a decent backstory of Shadow Striker. In this episode, all we learn is just how Optimus got the, um... How Optimus got the Matrix of Leadership. We don't, and we don't even know what happened at all to Optimus. Like, we know he was a file clerk, but we don't know his life at all, like, prior to, um... The, um, the Autobot, the War for Cybertron. We don't know how he ends up becoming leader of the Autobots and why Alpha Trion decided he should be the one to take the Matrix of Leadership and become the next Prime. Um, I, we don't know any of that. And for the, with the, um, the last two flashbacks, they're just kind of really filler. And though, I gotta admit, the last flashback, it was really, it looked really cool, but just, like, the, the, it was just, no, it was just, it looked cool, but there was, there was nothing to make cool. It was just a bunch of cool stuff for no reason, in my opinion. It was just, like, a bunch of, filler stuff aside from like maybe a little bit of the first part and it sets up like what the inter an interesting concept for how Bumblebee and Teletron X are gonna rescue Windblade in the next episode but other than that it was just it was kind of filler cool filler but filler still nonetheless and so that was my review of Transformers Cyberverse season 1 episode 13 Matrix of Leadership if I had to rate this episode I would probably give it a 7.5 out of 10 definitely a step up from Sabotage and Teletron X but the fact is it's still just a more like a like a basic more life lesson episode that's totally f that's for the most part filler and Teletron X really really b makes the the first half or like first you mean first third of this episode really really annoying so um hopefully we'll see less of Teletron X or they at least tone down his character in the coming episodes and we get more story progression as the season goes on so that's it for this review I'll be back tomorrow with episode 14 siloed if you like this review, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later.